All right, we'd like to welcome you to uh, Sass's National Championship, title winner race here in Phoenix, Arizona. Hi everyone, welcome to the show. Uh, today I'm really excited about having Bill, Billy Boots Buckman, a really good friend of mine on the show. For those of you who have been listening to us for a while, probably remember the episode we did with Billy Boots. Um, I'm happy to have him here today because he's in town for Winter Range. So Billy, why don't you tell us what Winter Range is? Okay, Winter Range is uh, SAS, Single Action Shooting Society's National Championship of Cowboy Action Shooting. Uh, the uh, national championship here in Phoenix, World Championship uh, out near Albuquerque, but uh, we this is a pretty full match with uh, 36 stages and around 20 shooters per uh, uh, per stage, three different rotations for three days, so around 800 shooters. Wow, that's it, you know it's amazing. I know it's a big deal when you come out here. There's tents with all kinds of products that are associated with cowboy action shooting. I know the women get all dressed up. Of course, here you are in your time period garb. Let's talk about that a little bit because that's one of the cool things about going to a, a cowboy action shooting match. It's really fun to watch because you get to see all, all kinds of characters. Exactly. So uh, what's your character? My character to me, uh, I just came up with Billy Boots. It's, I felt like it was just a, a young cowhound uh, on the uh, out on the range, uh, on the cattle drives and such, and I've been asked, well, what about the, your, your striped pants? Because I'm kind of known to wear pretty loud, a lot louder than this striped pants, but I, and I say, oh, I think a young cowboy had enough money out on the cattle drive to go buy him a nice pair of pants, and uh, so that's it, and uh, my boots kind of say things for Billy Boots, but uh, it's just kind of, uh, that's kind of me. The hat is, uh, I, I wanted uh, D-Bar J to make me a hat to look like Billy the Kid's hat. And he did a great job, so uh, I give Dave credit for the hat. Looks like the one in all the pictures you see of Billy the Kid. So uh, anyway, that's kind of my trademark. And uh, uh, That's so. part of what they require is period correct clothing and yes. firearms. Yes, pre-1900. We have, uh, you look like pre-1900 in your clothes, in your firearms, or you have one... Uh, one option is to go be western with the Bescadera holsters, the Flaherty shirt, you know, Roy and Jean type thing. And there's uh, and there's certain uh, rules for each category that we have, and there's uh, well over 25 different categories. But uh, classic cowboy uh, pins you down to what particular cartridge you might shoot in a rifle. I shoot black powder, which and I shoot with one hand, which is Frontier cartridge duelist. So I have to shoot black powder or a black powder sub, which means smoke. So I'm at the disadvantage as far as placement and overall standing because I'm dealing with smoke. But firearms are, are period correct, pre-1900s. That picks up a few pump shotguns like a Model 97. It's legal because it was patented. It, does, it doesn't matter that it might have been made in 1955. It's still patented. <laughs> so you've gone over your clothing and that's kind of cool stuff, but let's talk about your firearms. Uh, I see you got your pistols on. You have okay. two of them. Okay. So okay. Do, does everybody shoot two pistols? Everyone will shoot two revolvers of some sort. The cap and ball, uh, they have their own category called Frontiersman. So uh, they'll shoot cap and ball. Most, uh, most of us, us, I'll say, will shoot probably 38s. But you could shoot uh, 45, very, very popular, especially in classic cowboy. If you want 38 40s, you can shoot them, or 44 40. But as long as they're period correct and they're single action, this gun is not old at all. Uh, uh, patented uh, really by Freedom Arms in, in uh, 1997, but it's a clone of what a Colt looked like in in the correct period. I noticed you corrected me when I said pistol, and because it's a revolver, and I know pistols are modern day semi-automatic. Yeah. But you know, I, handgun, pistol. That's right. uh, You know, yeah. most of us. We call them whatever. That's so, right. But these are revolvers, mm -hmm. and they're based on the old Colt. Based on the Colt design. Now, your, your competition is different than some, where you have to shoot with both hands. I shoot a duelist. Uh, a duelist will shoot with one hand, or they'll trade off one to the other. But, mm -hmm. he, but he actually fires with one hand. I shoot double duelist, which means pretty much ambidextrous. I will draw the right hand and shoot, draw the left hand and shoot then I get the advantage of holstering. I can be shooting left 
hand while I'm reaching for a shotgun or reaching for shotgun shells, reaching for lever action gun, whatever. That, that's a little bit of an advantage. Disadvantage is we're not quite as fast as the guys shooting with two hands. <laughs> but, you know, you have your choice. There's, what, eight or so different types of competitions that you can get into in cowboy action shooting? Yes, there, uh, and there's a lot of age-based. Okay. Because so many of the shooters that came in over in uh, from other disciplines now, we're getting on in the years. And elder statesmen, uh, say, uh, you know, 70-year-old people are one of the biggest categories there are out there. And even cattle baron at 75 and above is a big class. Because wow. that's, that, that's the people that do a lot of traveling and so they can make these matches. And there's some guys like you who, are, who, even though they're up there in age, you're still darn competitive. I mean, the young guys yes. got to really watch it or you'll beat them. Well, in my particular class, Frontier Cartridge Duelist, uh, some matches will divide it in a little bit age, but out here at Winter Range, National Championship, I'm up against anybody. He can be 30 years old and here I am 72. And it's a wide open age class, which makes it kind of difficult. I don't get from A to B as fast as some of those guys that's 30. Yeah, but you're smooth. <laughs> I'm smooth and I, and, and, I, and, and I still do okay. Yeah. Now I want to introduce Charlotte Buckman, Sassy Boots, and she actually is a competitor as well. Uh, her and uh, Bill got married a, a few years ago, and since then she's been attending, and she decided recently that she wanted to start shooting, and I hear you got some of the top of the line guns for Christmas. I did. Yeah. <laughs> well, can you tell us a little bit about what you got so we can uh, know what to look for when you're out there? Uh, best I can. Yeah. I have a Jimmy set of Rugers, the uh -huh. Jimmy Spar guns. Wow, that's I a big I, name. And I believe that Bill honestly thought I would go to the other gun that I had, uh -huh. but <laughs> it didn't happen that way. <laughs> uh, he, he was hoping you picked the cheaper one, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, you've got two, two guns here. Why don't you hand those to Billy so we can talk about it. Let's go with the shotgun first. Okay. This uh, shotguns, that we've got uh, guys that really soup up. We shoot. They look like a typical double barrel shotgun with short barrel, but they're all souped up on the inside. We can chamfer the chamber. So shells, uh, these are dummies, go in real fast. It's all about how fast you do things, but, uh, but honing the insides, maybe taking chokes out of the barrel. But uh, people like uh, Goat Neck Clem, Johnny Meadows, Boomstick J, do all this slicking up for these guns uh, to make them very competitive and as fast as you can shoot them. And we may have, uh, usually have knockdowns with the shotguns, but often we'll have a bird or something. So anyway, they're, uh, they're souped up pretty good. But this is, this is period correct mm -hmm. because the action is of the double barrel shotguns uh, in the in pre-1900. Well, I know for a fact in pistol, you, you load specific loads. Yes. It, it's got to be enough to knock down uh, the targets. Yes. So you really are critical about how much powder and, and how powerful the load is because you want to knock down the targets, but you don't want any more recoil than you absolutely have to deal with. Exactly. Exactly. So that, now, my criteria in a, in a black powder class is not um, velocity or knockdown or power factor, we have to make X amount of smoke and we have a standard of smoke. <laughs> but in the other classes, it's, uh, we have a little power factor, it's pretty simple. It's, uh, you know, if you drive a 100 grain bullet at 600, you've made the power factor. But sometimes, and we'll have it at this match, we'll have knockdown targets with pistol and rifle. So you don't want any just little, little funky load to get out there and just go pop. But again, especially as duelists, the less recoil I have to go from target to target, I don't want to be shooting a full house load of a 45 and be competitive. No. Cool. We've covered the shotgun, so let's talk about the rifle. Charlotte, why don't you uh, yeah. hand Bill the rifle? And uh, thanks for b being on the show with us and helping us out. You can go sit down and right, you, you know you. watch your husband do his thing. All right. <laughs> All right. The rifle is a. Uh, a replica of a uh, Winchester 73, and uh, but it's had a lot of race stuff done to it, and uh, got jeweling on it, and uh, nice padded leather wrap, uh, barrels uh, uh, only 20 inches compared to a lot of the older guns. Uh, carriers lighter. This particular gun was Cowboys and Indians guns, but uh, there's a lot of great gunsmiths out there. Cody Conninger, uh, Boomstick J. Uh, we have a lot of their products. This particular one is just a Jim Bowie job, and it's uh, very slick, very short stroke, 
take that away from the old guns that were way out here. Very fast, very speedy, still 38 in a 357 chamber. And uh, you know, we all know that the price of guns has to do with the demand. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of cowboy action shooters. And so these guns aren't cheap. No. Uh, they, they're really fine workmanship. There's no, mm -hmm. no question about the quality. But some would think they see a lever action gun and, and they remember those kids BB guns and the replicas and the 22s and they're thinking like 300 bucks and that's probably not going to get you an appointment with one of these guys to build one no, of these guns. No, no, uh, yeah, the gun itself uh, you can uh, get uh, 14, 1500 dollars in uh, in a nice lever gun, but then you're going to put them another five or six hundred dollars probably in the make them really race ready if you want to be a real competitor. Okay, tomorrow you have. Practice, right? A practice warm round? Yes, warm up. Warm up okay. Or if I want to go shoot fast, fastest pistol, fastest shotgun, just... They have just, side matches? They have side mm -hmm. matches. Uh, and then they have what's called frontiersman match for guys that shoot the captain ball and uh, uh, and some of that stuff. But tomorrow we'll have warm-ups, uh, different rotations of warm-ups, shoot four or five stages to just kind of get you ready what what it's really going to kind of feel like come Thursday morning, 7 o'clock. So Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, yes. full day of competition. Full day. If anybody happened to be from Phoenix and they wanted to drive out to Ben Avery, yes. they could find the, the match. It, you can't miss it. As a matter of fact, you have to park down the ways and they haul you in on a trailer. And, That's right. Um, there'll be literally several hundred people there just watching. That's right. And, uh, Lunch is there. They have all kinds of stuff. So anyone who's in Phoenix that really wants to watch this, um, you know, this is going to probably be aired on Friday. So if you get out Friday afternoon or Saturday, you'll be able to see what Cowboy Action Shooting is all about. Yes, mostly Friday and Saturday is, uh, is a general public day. There's lots of vendors. People can come out and buy things uh, that they want to take home or give the grandkids or whatever. But a lot of vendors and a lot of shopping to be done, a lot of good food to have. and and a lot of great shooters to watch shoot. Well, Billy, I really appreciate you coming in, spending some time with us. Good luck this weekend. Well, thank you. Um, let's end by letting our listeners know just how good you really are. I know you don't like to talk about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, give us some of your accomplishments, so if they came out specifically to watch you, what they could expect. Well, I don't know if we can still expect it or not, but uh, anyway, I have been the national champion six times uh, and a world champion five times and uh, took a second or third place many, many, many times along the road in the last uh, 15 to 20 years, but, uh, and, and that's in the big matches and there, we have regional matches that have attended and done well and state matches and, and such as that. But, uh, well, good. I want to take just a few minutes. One last thing, for those of you who have been regulars on with us on our show, you probably recognize the name Todd Hodnett. And, you know, the funny thing is, is I met Todd, and you know, kind of through Billy in a, in a, a way. He told me about Todd, this guy who, who had just, you know, was a, a cowboy action shooter and was really getting into long range shooting. And this was many years ago. And since I've gotten to know Todd a lot better, tell us the story about, how, you know, how you know Todd and, and what he's become to you. Well, Todd, uh, Todd's family uh, ran a ranch not far from me, and uh, uh, Todd had kind of excelled in most everything he had done, from archery to skydiving, golf, or whatever, and he took up cowboy action shooting, so we, we would train together, and, and uh, he would, he would, I'd go to his house, or he'd come to my range, and uh, his uh, alias was Handlebar Doc, and so that's what most people knew him by, and my wife and I then called him our, our son, as well as uh, his running buddy, Long Hunter, but uh, anyway... Uh, Todd got a sliding off, and I was one time I was at a at a big match, and he calls and say, "Hey, I've been down here in South Texas training these guys, and they want me to shoot long range, and I kind of like it. And will you get me some ammo from Black Hills? Don't you know them?" And I said, "Yeah." Well, in just a few months, he's a national champion, long range shooter, and he picked up the military saw him, and the rest of it's really history. Well, that's really cool, and you know we like to make all these connections from the people that that we know throughout the industry, and and you and Todd, you, you know, you're a pair, both of you, some of the nicest people I've ever met. Uh, Billy, thanks again for being with us. Oh, uh, good luck this weekend, and thank and you. hope you tear them up. All right, thank you very much. Okay. I enjoyed being here. Thank good you. Deal.